Hey everybody, Ryan here. Today, it's gonna be fun to, to dig into the tech of Databricks. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download VS Code on my MacBook and I'm gonna write some simple code and then I want to execute it on Databricks. And I'm gonna run it on Databricks Connect to get that real-time interactive experience. And I'm also going to run some test code to run a workflow, uh, which will be emulating a job run inside of Databricks as well, all with inside of VS Code. I have a brand new workspace I just spun up uh, moments ago. You can see it's uh, created nine minutes ago. This is the first time I'm opening the workspace. When I say the first time I'm opening it, uh, let me make sure I'm sharing my screen. Let's see. All right, I'm sharing my screen. So this is the very first time I'm opening it. Like I said, it was created nine, 10 minutes ago. And you can see this is the first time I'm accessing it. The SQL warehouse uh, has, has one SQL warehouse running, but there is no history. Uh, if I look at the jobs and pipelines, there's no jobs defined. There's no jobs that have been run. Uh, this is a brand new workspace. If I click on catalog, I do have a catalog, uh, but the default schema has no tables. So this is truly a fresh workspace, as you can see. And here is VS Code. I'm downloading and running this for the first time with this workspace. And I'm going to uh, go into extensions and I'm going to type Databricks. This is going to be allowing me with this Databricks extension with the 205,000 downloads. I'm going to be able to install this to interact with my workspace that, again, is brand new. And this is installed. If I go into this uh, extension, you can see create a new Databricks project. Um, let's see. I'm going to edit a file here, and this is not the correct file. This is a different workspace. Um, so what I wanna do is I'm going to choose to use this file, and this is the correct URL of this workspace, 208A. And then I have to generate a personal access token. If I go into my settings, I go into developer access tokens, generate new token. This is for VS code. And then I'll generate. And I'm going to post that into my configuration file. And then I'm going to save that. And then since I have this saved, I'm going to click this as the default. And then you can see this successfully logged into the default profile. And then I'm going to have to choose a folder path for this new project. And let's pick my local MacBooks uh, user directory. And then these are a couple of templates, but I want to use Python for PySpark. And then let's just go with the default folder name, my project. Uh, we will include a default notebook. Let's not do live tables, but let's install a sample Python package. And I do want to run serverless compute to make this very simple. And you can see project was successfully created. And then let's open up that folder of my project. And then you can see under source file, uh, I have the notebook. Databricks connects disabled. We'll want to enable that in a little bit. But before we get into any kind of run, let's go into the main.py. And this is, again, sample. This is a sample Python file. When I click this, I have two different options. If I click on run Databricks, you can see run file as workflow or run as Databricks connect. Let's run the file as a workflow first. And what this is going to do, I have to attach a cluster and let's attach serverless. I'm going to have to click on that one more time. This is going to bundle up the project files, and it's going to upload those Databricks bundle assets into Databricks, and then it's going to run this. You can see a job is being run right now. So if I go back into jobs and job runs, 
you can see at 4.33 p.m., it's 4.34, this job run was submitted by the submit API. And you can see it's running for 23 seconds and it's running just as it's showing inside of the UI. And we're gonna let that run and then we're gonna see what the output is. Uh, if I click the job that's running this job run, this is gonna output once the job is successful, it'll post that here. And then as well as when that's successful here, this is going to say when it was successful. Uh, but this, since it's a, a job run inside of Databricks, this is not gonna output the, the it's not gonna output here. It's just gonna say it was successful. And you can see this was succeeded. So if I refresh this, you can see it refreshed and it shows the top five results. If I go back here, you can see this was successful. And then here, the job run, it's showing the results here from the run, but not from the output terminal. So that was pretty simple to run a job in Databricks, but let's make it even more simple. I wanna run this again, but I wanna run this as inside of Databricks Connect. And this is a different type of run because again, this is gonna run real time. And this is going to hit the uh, interactiveness of serverless. Um, and it's going to basically run the Py Python code locally. And then it's going to run the PySpark code inside of Databricks and execute. And you can see exactly that's what it did. And then it returned the results here inside of the terminal. And then if I go back into my query history, there should be two results, one for when we ran the Databricks SQL job and one from when we ran the Connect API. And that's that was really simple. I wanna do one last thing uh, to maximize this fun. I have another Python file that I wanna add and I wanna basically take this file and create a, uh, I wanna generate a new file inserting data into an iceberg table. So iceberg insert 1000 rows.py. And this is exactly what this PySpark code is gonna do. It's going to generate a thousand rows inside of my catalog default schema into this new table that does not exist. If I go here, look again, this does not exist. So this is gonna be the first time we're ever running this. And Let's actually give this a shot and run this inside of Connect because I want this to be snappy, real time, et cetera. I had to save that real quick. I didn't save it before. So that was important to save that before I ran it. So now that I run this a second time, it's going to generate. And here it is. And you can see it's running inside of Databricks and then inserted 1000 rows. When I refresh this schema, here is my table. This was created moments ago at 437, it's 437. And then if I select sample data, I will wanna run this on the serverless warehouse where this is gonna do a select top uh, or limit uh, 100 rows. And we'll be able to see that in a second here as it's starting. And then if I go back while it's running, into my query history, this is showing you exactly Spark Connect API. This is writing the thousand rows. And then this is printing out those records as well from the data frame. And all of that is being tracked. And then again, when we go into the table to look at that sample data, uh, that is going to output those rows that we just inserted, those, those uh, 1,000 rows. And it's really that simple uh, to interact with uh, Databricks Connect uh, with any ID. It doesn't just have to be uh, VS Code. It could be uh, IntelliJ. It could be uh, PyCharm. Anything you want to run on your local machine, you can do that just by simply providing the authentication connecting via the workspace URL as we did. And the authentication can be OAuth or it can be personal access token, which I prefer personal access uh, when I wanna do a simple test. 
But that's all I have today, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Until next time.